Welcome back to the Divisions Them podcast, episode 112. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm very grateful for y'all who are, you know, sticking with us through this entire journey. We got a lot of exciting guests coming up in the future. But today's guest is one that honestly came together kind of last minute, but I'm very excited because as you guys know, our last guest was my cousin, Chaitan Bakru, who has been dealing with visual impairment since he was a child um, or since he was born rather, and he's now fully blind. And so in my head, I was like, who would be the best next guest? And what better than to have an optometrist on today's podcast? I'm bringing my doctor, Dr. Giap. Yep. Giap Lay. Yeah. yeah. I say that right? That's correct. Yes. Dr. G. <laughs> Play, he's an optometrist in Brea, California. Very intelligent guy. Went into his office to get my eyes checked, and we had an entire podcast literally while we were sitting in his office. <laughs> and so I was like, dude, you got to come on the show, and let's let's you know dig deep. Uh, this is going to be a super informative episode. I do want to set the stage that I'm not a licensed doctor. I'm not a professional. My dad is, but I'm not a professional. Um, but this is me sitting here from a purely learning standpoint, and I want to truly pick your brain today and and just learn as much as we can. So again, we have Dr. Gap Lee. Welcome to the podcast. Why did I agree to this? <laughs> <laughs> well, you look good, dude, and I'm happy that you're here. How are you feeling today? Oh, not bad. It's my day off. So I think you just come here and share some of the yeah. knowledge. I mean, if it can help a little bit, then yeah, be beneficial. I should not be drinking energy drinks. So I, I need to start there. What is it about energy drinks that I, are so I bad? I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, once in a while, you're a little... Need a little pick me up, then I, I just want people to do it on a regular basis. Yeah, of course, you know, cumulative effect and all the stuff, all the stimulant, and then you should read the ingredient and uh, not good for your body. Yeah, just in the long run, I can't um, even pronounce half the ingredients that are on the on the can, so <laughs> it can't be good. <laughs> and that's the <a> hint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the you know, I mean, like I say, once a while is okay. Yeah, uh, my my uh, stimulant of choice is. Caffeine and black. Mm. Yeah, just black coffee. Black coffee. Yeah. And it should be good for you. How do you feel about nicotine as a stimulant? <laughs> I ask you because I do have, I'm not going to lie, I do have Zins in my pocket and I do use Zins, but well, occasionally. I, you, you have to ask, right? <laughs> you got to have something. You got to have some vices, right? Everyone okay, needs something. Well, what I can say, I'm not going to go out here and uh, I already have, I meet people every day. Yeah. I know the smoker and all, but and I'm not going to. Uh, tell them, okay, you get to quit smoking. It's just redundant, okay? Yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you know what's good for you, what not. And, and only time I have to talk to patients because if they, um, about smoking or quit smoking is um, when they have family history of macular degeneration. Mm. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's very, very um, severe disease that actually a lot of people uh, over 60 actually go blind from it. It's very wow. common. If you happen to visit any uh, retinal specialist office, you see the room is just packed with people with that condition. Mm. And uh, even with a lot of treatment, which is not fun, we can go into that, um, they still cannot stop it. What, what is macular degeneration exactly? It's a, the macular is a part in the back of your eye of retina. It's a central vision. Okay, So a uh, certain age, and there's a lot of factor involved, but then there's some changes, and you see a little leakage, Little, when we look at it, you can see a little dot, and um, we can tell um, you can have starting to have that condition, almost like a waste product surface and around your macula, and you have a dry kind and a wet kind. Mm. The dry kind, I think it can progress very slowly, but ultimately some people actually lose the vision too when, we, you know, when you have scarring called geographic atrophy, and the wet kind is very bad, and you right. have fluid get underneath the layer of retina, and the new blood vessel growing, Again, scarring, and you can go in the span of two years from seeing okay to not seeing much or just shape. Wow. Yeah. And the, trust me, when we're kind of injection in the IAV, few weeks is, is not a fun thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason I say macular degeneration and smoking is if you have family history and you're at risk, and smoking increases the uh, risk of you getting that condition three times on the people who don't smoke. Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's important. Your lifestyle choices can affect your eyes, is what you're saying. Yeah. And yeah, of course, definitely. Yeah. Because your eyes part of the body. Health, healthy body, healthy eye. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why I, mean, I see the patient, I just look at the eye. I look at the whole picture. Because mm. uh, you can see what you can do to improve the, uh, you know, the health, the yeah. eye. And sometimes you can 
just pick up something that patient not even aware of. Yeah. Okay. I want to I want to dig deeper into the science of the eyes, and I have a lot of questions for you that I, I want to <laughs> ask you. Trust me, I prepared it a ton. Oh, but before we get into those, but I, I wanted to read what it says in the Bible in terms of eyesight. Mm. In Matthew 6, 22, 23, Jesus says, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And so, like you just said, the eyes are a part of the body. It's very important to take care of them because this is truly how we see the world and how mm -hmm. we function. Um, and so I want to get into the eyes, how they work, things that people can do on a daily basis to take care of their eyesight. You know, how can you train and support your eyes? I want to get into things like visual hallucin hallucinations, lazy eyes, um, eyes in relation to sleep, cures for blindness, eyelashes, color blindness. We're going to get into all this stuff, but before we get there, <laughs> I don't think we have enough time. For oh that. no, we'll be good. I promise. <laughs> before we get there, can you walk me through, Two things, a day in your life as an optometrist, and then mm -hmm. also how did you become an optometrist? Like, why did you choose this as a career? Oh, that's long. <laughs> well, uh, when we when we were undergrad uh, at the UC Irvine, of course, we know we're going to go into a health you know, field business, but we don't know which one. Mm. Yeah, and then, you know, I think uh, a lot of people ask me what should they should do. I say, you have to go out there and try Get your feet wet. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, everybody's going to, oh, I'm going to be this, 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 and that. You don't know. And then I spent my two years doing research at the UC Irvine um, intensive care unit. Yeah. Huh. That was not my cup of tea. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of depressing, actually. Yeah, a lot of crazy uh, stuff, I'm yeah, sure you yeah. saw. So, yeah. and then, you know, then I happened to volunteer for uh, one optometrist. And mm. she inspired me so much. Stuff, you know, she can do to help people. So that's, I get an idea there. Uh, actually, it's, it's not a, a smooth journey because after undergrad, then a, a family, kid, work for 10 years. Mm. And then they say, okay, let's go back to school all the time. Yeah. So after 10 years, it's really tough. You have to recheck all the classes, all the entrance exam and all that stuff. So uh, I got in, and uh, in class, they called me dad. Yeah, everybody's like that's so funny. I know, but then you get different perspectives. Yeah, yeah, and I, I don't have uh, the schedule or the time they 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 did. You know, after after class they can stay and study. I have to go home, my family, all the responsibility. Yeah, but you know, it's it's all good. Yeah, yeah. So your your intention of becoming a an optometrist was you wanted to help people. That was the main reason. Oh, this sounds kind of, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great motivation uh, I mean, for but, becoming a doctor. But if I, she said when you apply to professional school, they ask you, why you want to be this and that and want to be optometrist. And if you ever say, I want to see people, help people see, and like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know, yeah. people have heard that a thousand times. Mm. Yeah. Of course, it is your intention. And yeah. then I actually really like that because you make the difference yeah. every day. Yeah. Yeah. Every day, if you can help people see, help people not just the vision, but like I tell you, I see people with, with a patient as a whole person. So you have to look at everything. You know, I look yeah. at the eye, do the exam, and I notice this. I, I like uh, this patient. I noticed, I think about two years ago, he had a little ulcerated part on his uh, cheek right there, mm. and I keep asking, "What's happened? You know what? How long you had this for?" And he said, "Oh, yeah, it's been like for a couple of years. I keep shaving over that." And I go. Yeah, uh, to me, look at the A B C D of that. That's skin cancer right there. Wow. Yeah, I send him out. They remove this much of a chunk of the uh, yeah skin. Yeah, Joe. So a lot of time you have to pay attention and see what um, you know. Just just observe. Sometimes you can ask questions. Yeah. And you actually pick up a lot of things. You look in the eye, for example, in the back of the eye, you can diagnose a lot of things. And days, a lot of time, patient have no idea, like colon cancer. You can you can tell colon cancer from the eyes. You look in the back of the eye. You know, let's just say not everybody, but you see, you look in the back of the eye. You see a little black spot, like cluster. They call it. We call it bear trap, and this is in an African American male. More likely than not, he has colon cancer. Okay. Yeah. So you actually you can pick up a lot of things. Yeah. Um, of course, diabetic retinopathy is rampant. You see anemia. Uh, one time, I actually. Have this lady with the brain aneurysm. Wow. 
Yeah, actually, she can. I thought I thought a brain aneurysm was where your brain just like explodes. So you just that's a blood out. vessel. And the aneurysm is a part of blood vessel that's really weak. It's kind of balloon. And at some point, it just um, bursts. Depends on what it is. It could be dangerous. Brain aneurysm. When then when the blood vessel burst, you could die or mm. paralyze. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad I caught that one. You because saved a life. Exactly. And then the week before, she saw a different optometrist, and that lady go, you need new glasses. Your headache is just because you need new glasses. And I look in there, and she goes, holy moly. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, she actually, that lady, she's actually young. She's like in her 30, and she came back and hugged me. Oh, uh, yeah. That felt good. That's so sweet, man. You get yeah. to truly, like, touch people's lives. Yeah. That's awesome. I want to ask you, what's, like, the most common visual impairment that you see in your patients? Oh, these days? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people always become more and more nearsighted. Mm. That's a big subject too. And is that a result of being on their phones, being on screens? Okay. That's a lot of people say they dismiss that. But since the introduction of the uh, home computer, you, mm. you see that stuff is on the rise. And it's just crazy now that everybody have the phone. Okay. There's no coincidence. Yeah. Yeah. So we see that now. You, you, look, after the pandemic, I see how big German people who become more nearsighted. Yeah. Everybody at home and Zooming and Look in the screen. Yeah. 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 I want to get into the screens and social media a little bit deeper. But before we get there, I was very curious, I think, to understand the relationship of the eyes to the brain. Can you kind of break that down? Oh, what part of it do we... In a sense of like, because my understanding of vision is that, you know, what we see is a result of electricity. It's a complex system. Yeah. Yeah. So you you get uh, sensory input. And then that convert to um, you know um, electro. So it go to your um, your brain and go to the nerve. And this this like a whole bunch of nerve go back here to a cerebral lobe, and your brain will interpret what you see. So anything wrong along the pathway, then you don't have normal vision. Yeah, you can have good eye, but then something wrong back here. Of course, people with brain tumor, we see them have issue with vision. Or, you know, there's something wrong with your, any part of the eye, your cornea, your lens, your retina, then you don't have good vision. Yeah. yeah. So this is a complex system. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, what you see affects how you feel. For sure. Or what you don't see. Yeah. <laughs> or you can't see. Yeah. Absolutely. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, there's days where I feel like my, my eyes are very dry. They're mm. tired. I, you know, even just looking becomes a challenge. Mm. And then there's other days, like yesterday where you gave me the, or mm. the other day where you gave me fresh contacts. Mm. Immediately, I felt almost like I felt like my mood had increased based on how I could see. And so can we talk about that? Like, what's the relationship between mood and eyesight? Well, of course, eyesight is important. Yeah. That's why it's so important. You, they, they, they did the survey. They asked what kind of part of body you want to give of, you know, your, your limbs, your hearing, and the eyesight. Usually, the last one people want to give up because mm. you know how what you see the world and you imagine. And of course, I mean, you you have all your limbs and hearing, but you know, with the eyesight, it's kind of I don't know, depressing. Is that the right word? Yeah, yeah I'm not. I'm not saying that. Uh, say this. Uh, Anything you know, to offend blind patient, but yeah, from your and my point of view, that's of course when it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to accept that. So I, if you have good vision, I mean, sometimes we take it for granted. Yeah, yeah, and good, comfortable vision too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you like I say, say we take for granted because sometimes. Uh, you you don't really think about it when something happened. It's just minor an eye infection or something, injury to the eye. Let's say you yeah. lose one, then you know how important that is. So yeah. Definitely that affect your your mood, your, your your life, the way you see things. Yeah. I do have a patient that he told me, uh, <laughs> he just, when, uh, of course he couldn't wear a contact. I don't remember, is that because infection or something? And he didn't even have glasses. Mm. He got anxiety. Yeah. You can't see. You can see as well. Mm. So there is a relationship between eyesight and anxiety. Like when you have anxiety, your eyesight can go. Well, off. definitely too. That's okay. the other way around. There's a lot of time when we try to diagnose a patient why they can't see. And this or we have there's some visual changes and we cannot tell and we do every test under the sun. 
Yeah. You look at the eye and some we did testing, we did imaging, and everything looks good. But the person mm. can't see. And sometimes anxiety and stress can do that. Yeah. It's a, yeah. So, but then that's a very tough diagnosis because you have to rule out everything else first before we can see that, okay, that's just that. And then also a case when people, we call type A personality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I just see one one guy recently of a couple of weeks ago. Of course, he's like, I, I noticed weird stuff, like little oval thing floating in front of my eye and they, they can't shake it. And it just, it just came almost instantly and he suddenly, and he was worried. Of course, for, for, for us, we're like, oh, uh, is there any new floaters, new flashing? We just worry about retinal detachment, which is also something very urgent. So we have to treat it, otherwise they lose more vision. But um, when I looked in his eye and I saw the the macula appearance and I asked him right away, you've been having a lot of stress. <laughs> you can tell. Well, actually, there's this condition when you have too much stress, it make your macula, the best vision barrier, swollen. Oh. And vision become blurry. In one eye, and you can see distortion where you look. Yeah, yeah. So that's stress directly affect your heart. Which is, of course, stress the crazy thing to the body too. Yeah, think, yeah. But that's one other thing that can affect your eye, your vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm reading a book right now by Dale Carnegie. Um, it's called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, and it talks about how worry and stress are the leading causes of disease in society. Definitely, today. that's that's major choice, source of inflammation. You already know what inflammation does to your body. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. What What are some things that can control stress? Because I feel like for me, you know, the days where I feel like I have anxiety or I have stress mm. and I can feel like my eyesight is not sort of at its you know peak, I'll do things like go for a walk and just be in nature, you know, looking around or um, I'll look at a distance, you know, instead of looking up close, I feel like looking at objects far away mm. can be helpful. Do so you, is there is there some sort of proof around looking at objects uh, at afar to why control you, why stress? Why don't you rest your eye? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's for people who have to look at something up close all day and really cause a lot of eye muscle fatigue. And that's a good exercise mm. to uh, reduce the fatigue and sometimes, you know, um, prevent your vision from getting worse. Yeah. You talk about stress. That's just stress, right? In general, stress? Yes. <laughs> Again, <laughs> that's a big subject. <laughs> yeah. Because stress is a big conversation. You like the Appreciate Beatles? It. You Say like the again? Beatles? The what? The Beatles. Uh, yeah, I like the Beatles, for sure. Yeah. Let it be. Let it be. You heard it here. <laughs> That's the advice. No, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, I want to. I want to talk about the mornings a little bit because I think I'm big into like biohacking. Like I like to try and be mm. at my peak mm. performance every mm. day, and so I start my morning with, you know, um, a look just under the sun around six or six thirty in the morning. But what happens? You don't have sun. Um, I don't do it, and then I, <laughs> I I do other things. I'll do grounding or, well, you or whatever. Would live in the north. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take my, I swear to God, I'll take my shoes off. I'll go lay it in the grass. Like, okay, I just need to connect with nature. But there's, Dr. Huberman says that when you look just under the sun, it helps boost your circadian rhythm. So it wakes you up. Is that, is there truth to that statement? Uh, your body actually need that rhythm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you see how people who live in, let's say, Alaska. Yeah. In a long period of time, they, they don't have the sun. Uh, I think they have a risk of depression there. I've heard that. Yeah. A lot of suicides in Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. So, there. so actually the sun is important. But for me, at least, as an eye care provider, uh, it's a, we're talking about, uh, maybe just up to, you know, subject a little bit. The sun is an important factor uh, right now um, because if you know myopia, nearsightedness becomes almost like an epidemic. Mm. So the World Health Organization, they estimate by 2050, half of the world will be nearsighted. Wow. Because where we're going right now, we look at screen everywhere. We have a computer in our hand. Yeah. The little kid now have the, the phone. I mean, Crazy. I mean, there's actually, you cannot put the genie back in the bottle anymore. You know, 20 years ago, we were okay without, but now that's just the way it is mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. So uh, that's, Half of the world will be near. I think that's a staggering number. Yeah, and then kid become near near sighted every day, and yeah. that's what that in Asia in Asia they estimate by then to be ninety percent. 
Wow. Just, Are they just really on their phones out there? No, I think that's because already a lot of uh, people over there are already nearsighted. And you talk about wow. genetic factor. Yeah. Mom and dad, very nearsighted, very likely the kid will be. And then you were born with a nearsighted eye shape, which is more elongated. You're more likely to be more nearsighted when you get older. Got it. Yeah, beside the you know, behavioral factor and environment. So that's all that together. Then you see... Higher, high number of kids become more and more. They, they try to do a lot of study. Yeah. Oh, we'll get to a big subject now, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get into it. Uh, to, to see what can minimize that. Mm. Okay. So a lot of that was being done in Asia because that's where it all is, you know, it's, it's, it's a real problem. So they found out that um, the biggest thing, well, I mean, we, we're talking about resting your eye, not looking at something too long, too close, right? Mm -hmm. But they found one thing that surprised a lot of people is the sunlight. Really? Yeah. So actually sunlight, when you expose the sunlight, they, the study was to have the kid do the same activity, but the group that spent two hours a day in the sun, less likely to become nearsighted. I'm not talking about already become nearsighted and not progressing. I'm talking about Lessly to become mm. nearsighted. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the thing they found, the sunlight actually have an effect on the enzyme in the eye. A positive effect on the enzyme. Well, that, the, to, the enzyme promote the elongation of your eye shape. The more elongation you have, the more nearsighted you become. Mm. Yeah. And, oh, that's a, a lot of study in that too. So uh, they try to... Um, they, no, actually, the enzyme prohibit the growth of the eye, the elongation. Um, they're trying to give people the same enzyme without the sunlight <laughs> yeah. that become toxic. Right, because yeah. it's not natural. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you have to have that sunlight out there. And I, I tell people, this is so big that in Taiwan, they have this almost national slogan that tell, help people to remind people to have the kid. Of course, you have to protect the eye from the UV. Yeah, yeah but you have to be out there. And, yeah. and in China, they do uh, experiment by building classroom with window to allow more sunlight to go in. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah, that uh, the power of the sun for you. Yeah. So it yeah. is powerful. But yeah. also looking directly into the sun is not a good thing, right? <laughs> it's very damaging, just from what I understand. <laughs> well, it's very, very damaging. Okay. Because it hurts <laughs> when you look at the sun even every, for a second. Every time we have an eclipse, have people come in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and that's why. Oh, you you already wear protect, protective sunglasses. Yeah, and you look at it and say, well, "I want to see what it look like without the sunglasses." <laughs> Not smart. <laughs> and then you call you have to look at it. Okay, now uh, if you look at the sun long enough, which I I hope people don't, it actually burn a hole in the back of your eye. Wow. Permanently. Yeah. The macular hole. So that's when you have that hole. You don't have the sensory layer there anymore. You can see the like the blur spot. In front of central of your vision, mm. permanently. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Like you can light a fire with the sun with a magnifying glass. So why would anybody just go well, look the, in the sun? The UV it actually, sense. yeah, is very damaging and and you know absorbed by the cornea. And again, the same thing. If you in the sun a lot, uh, like surfer people like sport outdoor, um, those people get uh, cataract earlier than mm. the people because the, the lens in your eye absorb most of it and it ages and then faster. Yeah. So, uh, fortunately, these days, I mean, even for not even the sun, people um, do welding. Yeah. Yeah, back in the day, they, they didn't have enough um, protective gear. So right. They actually, I'm going to hold that too, but nowadays it doesn't happen. These days, you see people with the uh, hole in the back of the eye from the sun, solar maculopathy, usually schizophrenic patient. Really? They like to look at the sun. Interesting. It is. Got it. <laughs> yeah. That's not good. And then, you know, or some very <laughs> curious kid, I don't know. Right, right, or, right. Or some, some weird uh, competition they do. <laughs> There's like, there might be like TikTok challenges, like stare at the sun challenges. I hope not. That would be really bad. Don't start it, man. No, nah, we're not starting that train here. Do not stare at the do sun. Do not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're going to see the headline tomorrow. Dr. Giap Lee promotes and encourages kids to stare at the sun now. I'm just kidding. Well, before we end the topic of sunlight, I do have to ask you because... I have a constant battle with sunscreen because mm. I don't know if 
it's good or if the sun causes cancer or if it's the UV, the sunscreen that's causing the cancer. So I don't know. That's a whole different topic. Oh. But <laughs> when it comes to the UV rays and its effect on eyes, how, do you, how does one protect their eyes from the UV rays? Well, you have to wear sunglasses. Are there a particular type of sunglasses? Well, we had you wear the one that get enough to block 90 something percent of UV. Okay. Yeah. I mean, most of the sunglasses out there, if you get, you know, something that you know, reliable brand, Rayman, whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Not the $2 on the swap meet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. But yeah. they have the way of checking it. But for you, just get some decent pair and put them. I mean, I tell patients all the time, it's never early to put in sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. Because the damage is very accumulative. All right. Their life. Yeah. So when I see the patient in their 40 with a lot of character, I know it's the, uh, that he or she been out there a lot when they were younger without any sunglasses at all. When you see people with a lot of uh, cataract, early cataract, or oh, some growth in the eye, abnormal yeah. growth, which is called pinguecular pterygium, then you know there's some, they from a uh, country with a lot of sun and they don't wear sunglasses. Mm. Got it. Yeah. So, so wear you your sunglasses, definitely put guys. your sunglasses. That's to protect your eye, but the area around this too. Mm. This is where the sun hit you a lot. Yeah. Especially people with light skin and blue eye. Yeah. Again, when I see people in their 70, and I see weird skin changes around here, then we have to look into is that squamous cell or, or carcinoma or some other form of skin cancer. Got it. Yeah. I know a lot of people have what they call like the bags under their eyes. Mm -hmm. Is that from a lack of sleep or is that from sunlight? Uh, uh, no. I mean, lack of sleep can make it worse. Okay. I think it's more like if one is... Age and second genetic. Got it. Yeah. And that's just, I think, cosmetic. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's nothing bad. But. Got it. And we're back. Welcome back. We took a quick break, but we're going to dive right back into eyesight with <laughs> Dr. Gap Lee. So I want to talk about um, visual hallucinations. Ooh. Do you have patients that go through that? And is that a common thing that, that happens? Uh, you have to understand, it's a lot of things can cause hallucination. Mm. Yeah, a lot. So... Uh, but in order to diagnose something, a fight or cause, it's a complex thing. Yeah. Because it, it's subjective. Mm, yeah. Got it. But, uh, what causing that? Uh, who's sitting in front of me? Of course, again, you talk about schizophrenic patients. They see things <laughs> yeah. that you don't. Yeah. But they adamant that they see it. Right. Yeah. But you Crazy. don't see that. Yeah. And then you talk about uh, medication side effect. Mm. Some could do that. So there's a lot of factors that can so cause visual that's a lot. But you have to, yeah. but you, again, you once you know certain, you know, what's causing that is easier. But <laughs> the one I don't like is I don't know what's causing it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's, it's uh, if you have something like that, uh, I usually make sure it's not something from your visual system, from your eye, you know, from the anatomy, from your visual system, nothing wrong. And then, a lot of time you have to work with a family doctor and neurologist. Got it. Because it could be a different problem and that's then, not related really yeah, to Yeah. So uh, you have to find out what's wrong. And, you know, a lot of time you know what's wrong. So, yeah. yeah. Got it. What about things? Because there's a little, like, more common things I think that occur, at least from my perspective, like things like lazy eyes, color blindness. Tell me what a lazy eye is. I feel like I have a lazy eye. Like, so, Tell me what you think is a lazy eye. I think I have a lazy eye. I don't know why. I What's think your I definition have of a lazy eye? I feel like this eye uh -huh. is like it is like closes kind of while I'm talking, whereas this eye is larger, and I don't know why. <laughs> that's not lazy eye. It's not lazy eye. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So the I think the biggest misconception if we talk about lazy eye is people think the eye that turn in or out. Okay. Is a lazy eye? Wouldn't you think so? Yeah, that would make sense. A lot of people say that. I mean, I. Virtually all the patients I talk to, they think the eye that turn in or out is a lazy eye. But that's not it. What is it? The right, the correct definition of lazy eye, or we call it amblyopia, is the eye, even with they, we give them the best correction, glasses, contact, whatnot, they cannot see mm. well enough. That's the lazy eye. Got now, it. The eye that turn in or out for various reasons, so many things can make your eye lazy. Let's just say when you born with the eye miss eye, we call it um, trabismus, right? Yeah. In or out all the time, or most of the time. So when you grew up, when you grow up like that, the stimulus, the image, go to the back of your eye, hitting the wrong spot. 
Mm. Your eye never got proper stimulation developed normally. And over time, you don't see well anymore on that eye. Yeah. And another thing is, if you have one eye that's seen like blurry like that, the brain just prefer the better eye all the time. It just shut down the other eye, suppress it. Got it. And then when that's after a certain age, that way become lazy. So when we try to intervene, give them something, there's a limit how much they can see. And how severe it is depends on what the cause, uh, how much of the severity of the turn or what blocking the vision. Got it. That lazy eye. That mean it means even with the best correction, you cannot see well. Very interesting. I thought it was just like your that your eyelid closes a little well, bit. Well, the the eyelid, uh, higher lower is different thing. Some people was born like that. Oh, okay. And you have to make sure they born like that. If your eyelid become droopy one eye, all of a sudden, we have a problem. Because <laughs> it could be a stroke or something. <laughs> it could else. be a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Then again, you have to investigate, ask them, medication, trauma. You got hit in the eye, the head, something. Yeah. Uh, some have, you have blood pressure, high blood pressure. Yeah. You got to dig. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. For people that like want to take care of their eyes, because I think there's a lot of people like myself who actually care and mm -hmm. want to have eyesight for thank God, the, yeah, you know, have longevity <laughs> in their eyesight. What's like a good daily routine that people can use? Like, what are some things that are important for visual care? Uh, daily routine visual care. I think this day, I think the biggest factor people look at screen too much. Yeah. yeah. So I think you have to really. Minimize if you don't have to, then then don't. I don't have social media. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to be famous, so you better. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, every day I talk to my patient about practicing visual hygiene. Mm. So we on screen too much. Well, of course, you look at screen. It's a lot of things. You look at something up close, you're forcing your eye muscle to, to work harder. And then there's a lot of fatigue. Mm. And then you look at screen. Also, when you look at screen, it's different than looking at the page. Because you look at all the pixel refresh rate. It's create more fatigue. And then these days, we're talking about blue light. Which I'm not going to get to. <laughs> <laughs> because people ask me that every day too, but yeah. I think the verdict is still out. By the way, they ask, oh, is this blue light harmful to the eye? I don't know. Right. In, in animal model, you know, in theory, that's just, if you expose to a lot of blue light, it could, you know, give you early cataract and damage your macula and all that stuff. But that takes years. Nobody can, I don't think, can prove that yet at this point. Blue light is everywhere in the sun, too. Right. The problem, we look at the screen every day. Right. So that's a long exposure. And, mm. then, and then, in theory, also blue light because of shorter wavelength and it's, it's carry more energy, scatter, and give you more eye fatigue. Then some people swear that when they put on blue light, Lenses, they have less fatigue. Yeah, I say to each his own. Got it. So yeah. there's no, it's not scientifically proven if blue light. Uh, it's hard. Stuff. They did the study in Germany, I think, a few months ago yeah. to see if there's any reduction in fatigue when people wear blue light. You know what the result is? Tell me. Inconclusive. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't know. Surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. This thing to look at. I I think uh, the um, the absence of evidence. It's not the same as evidence of absent. Mm. Think about it. First. Well said. Yeah. I, I'll be honest, that yeah. definitely went over my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Say well, I'll I let you a few minutes <laughs> to digest. <laughs> Say <laughs> the absence of evidence is not the same as evidence of absent. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, got you, it. You, yeah. I got See, it. Yeah, that I know. Sense. It's not something that you can. <laughs> Right. I'm so, slow today. Yeah, so that's okay. It's not something that you can like right away. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I say, Fine, wear blue eyes glasses. If it doesn't, then you know, cause your normal leg. And if it works for you, it works for you, placebo mm. or not. Right. Yeah. I cannot really tell you it works or not. All the evidence we have so far. Right. What about red light therapy? Uh, it works for a lot of condition. Okay. Yeah, but still, it's still in the. I don't know. It's a, it's popular enough for me to endorse it. So work for a lot of patients for certain things. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of talk about it lately. Yeah. I like yeah. red light. I go to the red, in the red light sauna. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's good for your body. I don't exactly know what it does, but I just know I feel better once I get out of it. Right, so. Whatever works. Like I tell you, whatever, whatever flows your boat, Captain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are the captain of our own body. That's well yeah. said. Speaking of that, I want to talk a little bit about diet 
and the diet relation to eye health? Because we talked about it in I your need office. I out for that. It's fine. Give me, give me the Cliff Notes version of why someone should be eating healthy in relation to their eyes. Again, I stressed long enough that, of course, eyes are part of the body. 